Good morning, friends, and welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today, we are going to plant a, a lovely selection of fruit-bearing bushes. I have got two different kinds of blueberry bushes, and I have got two kinds of thornless blackberry bushes. We are going to plant here in the backyard. Uh, it's a busy day, of course, here at Creekside. It always is. Chandler is here. He is plugging, seeding, aerating the grass, so you'll probably see him. Jerry and Jackson are up at production. They are putting in the pipe and filling that in. Uh, remember, I don't know, what was it, a couple of days ago, uh, we went up there and Jerry kind of gave us the overview of that project, putting in some drainage pipe so that we can have more usable space at production. A lot of things going on. I am flying solo. I've got my furry friend, Brenna, of course. But what we're going to do is plant these berry bushes here in the backyard. Now, if you are a faithful follower of Creekside, you know that this is, um, these three beds are the dahlia beds. And I got hooked into dahlias when I went to go uh, visit my friend, Laura. She sent me a ton of her tubers. That was three years ago. This summer was horrible for my dahlias, y'all. And <laughs> You can see I lost probably like 90% of the dahlias. This entire first bed, I have one that is still alive and it gets better as it goes down. But this year, like I said, was absolutely horrific for my dahlias. It was the weather. Um, we would have long periods of heavy, 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 just tons of rain. Then we went through massive amounts of drought. It is on irrigation. Then we went through wet again. It was just horrible. And they're just gone. They're just rotted, died, beyond. So as we always say in gardening, when something doesn't work out or a plant dies, it just is an opportunity to do something else. So that is what I am going to do. While I love dahlias and they are gorgeous and they are stunning, they can be a bit of work because you have to stake them so much and they just tend to be super, um, I don't say floppy, but they can get really tall. And I had a ton of tall varieties and it was really hard for me to keep up with them. So what we're going to do is we are going to turn this first bed into uh, the berry patch, right? Then we're going to come down here, not today, uh, but this will turn into next spring, summer. This will be tall sunflowers and like tall zinnias, tall cosmos, that kind of thing. So this will be a cut flower of annuals and then any of the dahlias that come back next spring. So once I see growth from them next spring, then and they're all going to get moved to this bed. This bed has the most uh, viable dahlias still alive. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that I've already ordered dahlia tubers. Um, of course, you know, you order them well in advance. And so I'm pretty sure that I have some coming in the spring. So those will all get added to that bed. We're gonna to focus today just on the berries. And I have in the back of Johnny um, all of my bushes. So let's just start and work our way from left to right. Our sweet friends at Southern Living Plant Collection sent me three of the Osage Thornless Blackberries. So these blackberry bushes are thornless. They are a lovely two gallon size container. These are going to be hardy in zones six to 10. They are prolific fruits in late summer. We're gonna plant them three feet apart from one another because they will get four to five feet tall, three to four wide. And that's generally the spacing on all of these guys. And uh, of course your berry bushes love the full sun. So we have got three of the Osage. So we've got those. Then I have one from Proven Winners. This is Taste of Heaven. And Taste of Heaven uh, is brand new from Proven Winners. Again, it is another thornless variety. So there are no thorns on either one of the Taste of Heaven or the Osage, right? So it makes picking so much better. Now, we're going to go ahead and put both of them basically right beside each other in this space because they're both self-pollinating so they don't have to have um, you know a counterpart to them to produce that fruit 
But whenever you can mix berries together, so like multiple cultivars or varieties of blueberries, multiple varieties of blackberries, it helps with the pollination. Um, so that is what we are going to do, and I'm gonna dedicate this side to that. Uh, Taste of Heaven is hardy in zones six to nine, it too, three to five tall, two to three um, wide. Now, because both of these are gonna get some height to them, you could keep them as a shrub size, but we're not going to. We're gonna let them grow. So that's where uh, the poles, the post, are gonna come in very, very handy. And so that way I can um, get them planted. Everybody's gonna be planted in the center of the bed, and then we can use the post to help stake those blackberries up. So um, I know that Taste of Heaven from Proven Winners it only produces fruit on like the second year canes. So I actually got this Taste of Heaven um, from our e-commerce and I got it as a quart. So just so you know, if you buy a quart of this Taste of Heaven, I planted it in mid midsummer, and y'all look how much it has grown I mean, it's huge. I had it in this self-watering container from Vago up at the chicken coops. Obviously, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna put it in the ground. Um, but this started out as a quart, midsummer. There you go, very fast grower. However, I got zero fruit on it. Why? Because it produces fruit on old growth, second year canes. So next year, next summer, I will get fruit off of that. I suspect that the Osage is gonna be the same way, right? no fruit on it now it blooms on old growth so you don't want to prune them um, we want to wait until if you need to prune it obviously wait until after it produces fruit and then you can give it a trim um, every so often you want to go in and take out just kind of thin out some of those canes but i will not do that this year i will let them just be so thornless blackberries very excited about this now blueberries I don't know about your family, but my family adores blueberries. I buy a ton of blueberries and blueberries, especially organic blueberries, any kind of organic fruit can be quite uh, expensive. So why not just grow your own, right? Um, so we have got two different varieties again. So here I've got, and I've got two of them there back there. This is pink lemonade. And I showcased this in uh, the, the other day in the video. This is a three gallon. Pink lemonade is very cool because it is a cross of a rabbit eye and a high bush. High bush do better in like cooler climates. So think like the North. So if you think of like Maine, New Hampshire, that kind of stuff. That's where your high bush do really well, the mountains of North Carolina. Rabbit eye tend to be more um, tolerant of the heat, the humidity, the thick clay soil. So this is a combination. They cross pollinated a rabbit eye and a high bush. So it will do really well here in the South. Pink lemonade is so cool because its name, as it suggests, you're going to get pink blueberries. That's right. So when they are ripe, they are a nice, bright, deep, whatever kind of color pink that you think of. It is not a blue, it is literally pink. So you've got pink berries on this plant, which will make a beautiful display. And I've never tasted one in person. I'm just going off of what I'm reading, that it has a sweet, yet a little bit of a tart flavor, as pink lemonade does. So why not? It's fun, right? Food should be fun, gardening should be fun. So we have got pink lemonade. It is self-pollinating as well. However, again, when you have more than one, you're going to increase your fruit and the fruit size. So we have got two pink lemonades. And then I'm telling you what, y'all, Southern Living in their Down Home Harvest series of especially their blueberry bushes, they have the best names, uh, very iconic Southern uh, phrases. So I have three of the Hello Darling uh, blueberries. These, again, self-pollinating, but when you have multiple, um, it certainly does help. There are three of those in there. These are going to be earlier um, producers of your berries. Hardy in zones seven to nine, four to five tall, three to four wide. They have got beautiful new foliage on them, nice, really fun coloring to them. And you can kind of see the difference, you know, in obviously these are a two gallon, they're going to be a little bit younger plants than the pink lemonades. But we should still get fruit off of them next year 
it may not be a ton, but it's all right. You got to start somewhere, right? If you're not familiar with growing blueberries, um, obviously you get delicious fruit off of them, but blueberries also give you gorgeous, gorgeous fall foliage. They will turn deep colors of like reds and maroons and burgundies, stunning color. And we like to let them grow, right? So imagine four to five feet of these beauties in here. It is going to be fabulous. Your blueberries love acidic soil, love acidic soil. Good thing here in the South where I am, I have naturally very acidic soil. So that is going to help. In this bed where the dahlias, um, where they were, we had been mending with compost, the land and sea. So you can see that there is some land and sea um, just on the top there. Obviously I'm gonna come through and take all the twine down and I, <sighs> I don't really, I'm thinking that the blueberries are going to go on this end and the blackberries are going to go on that end. They're going to be roughly the same height. The blackberries are going to be a little thinner. So we're going to put, we're going to put the heavy weights down here and give some heft to the bed. Not that it really matters, but just in my brain, that makes sense. So the blueberries are going to go down here. Now, when, what we're going to do is you can see that there is drip tubing in this bed. It goes on both sides of the bed. It's just one big loop. So I will obviously pull that up so I know exactly where it is. And then I'm going to put the blueberries right in the middle of the flower bed. You will see as I am using my power planter auger, when I'm going to hit that great red clay soil, um, I'm going to use my biotone starter fertilizer, right? We want strong, healthy root growth. And I'm also going to go grab, I've got some just right here in front of me, um, some of the Daddy Pete soil enhancer. This is the aged pine bark finds. This is going to help my uh, acidity level in the ground. It's going to help make it even more acidic because they love it acidic. Then I will come through and I will top dress mulch this. Uh, Megan's home. I will go ahead and my alarm's going off. So we will use that soil enhancer, those aged pine bark fines um, again. It's going to insulate the roots. It's going to retain moisture. It's going to help suppress weeds and it's going to help acidify my soil. First things first, I got to get all this cleaned up. So I'm going to get the twine down. I will save that because it's great twine. Save that. I will pull out the weeds. I will make sure that I know there's there's only one dahlia that's still alive. So I think what I'm going to do is leave it for now uh, because this is not the time where I want to dig up a dahlia and then replant it. So come spring and it is on the outside of the bed. So I'll just kind of like position the plants. So so that that dahlia is okay. That one little lone survivor right here. Um, so in the spring, I'll dig it up and then move it to the far bed. But first things first, we are going to get the bed cleaned up and get these babies um, in their new home.
All right, my friends, uh, this morning's project is complete. I have got the blueberry and the blackberry bushes in the ground. It, it went a lot smoother than uh, than I was expecting, which is uh, always a lovely thing, right? So here we have one whole old dahlia bed now filled with four blackberry bushes and five blueberry bushes. You can see that I went ahead and got the blackberries uh, kind of strung up a little bit. Clearly, you can see that the two gallons, nice and a little short, nice and tight and compact. Y'all, dear heavens, if you've ever wondered if uh, or had any concern that that Vago self-watering container did not work, good golly, Miss Molly, the taste of heaven was so happy in there. Those roots had come way out of the bottom and were hanging out. I mean, when I planted this, this would probably be equivalent to like a five gallon plant, um, getting that in there. And so it, I had to, <laughs> I had to use the old, uh, the power planter and then my hoary hoary to like do the sides because it's not, of course, the the power planter is circular, right? And this was more of a square, but I got it in. So all is well, but dear heavens, that was an extensive root system. So if you have any questions or any doubts of one, how fast does this thing grow? Um, yeah, it grows fast. And then two about that self-watering container. Yeah, it worked out great. So nice and strung up and supported. Lovely. You can see, of course, we got that, uh, the daddy Pete, the soil enhancer down and got the blueberry bushes in there and then of course the the lone dahlia there she is right there so uh if she survives the winter then come spring i will move her and that will be easy to do the blueberry bushes you know i'm not gonna have to stake them i'm I can if I want to. If I want to try to keep them contained, I certainly could do that, but I don't have to. Uh, the whole area, the bed, did really well. I've had this irrigation on uh, probably for like the last week or so because we have not gotten any rain since Helene, which has almost been a month ago. And we've had very dry air and uh, cooler temperatures. It's getting the heat starting to come back a little bit. Jenny was glistening today. Um, but all that being said, the areas that are not on irrigation are very, very dry. But since I've had this on um, and I was running it for like 10 minutes uh, and it has that double line, it was nice and moist in there. It, on the fact it was a, going in there, I'm thinking maybe like a little bit too wet. So what I'm going to do is change my irrigation to come on like every three days, maybe every four days, that kind of thing, because I don't want these to sit in too wet of a soil. So it was great now getting them in, right? They were really well watered before I put them in. The ground is nice and damp, got uh, biotone in there, added all that pine bark in there, nice and mixed in. So everybody is doing well. Brenda's chasing yellow jackets, which is not going to go well for her, uh, but uh, she's a She's a strong-willed dog, and she, I guess, likes spicy food, so she does enjoy going after yellow jackets. What are you going to do? Um, so anyway, but you can see that this is kind of nice and raised up, which I really do like because going in there with the auger and essentially taking it out two, two gallons, three gallons here and there, it has a nice raise to it, um, and so that is good. will help drain everybody. Now, I know personally I have a hard time remembering how to fertilize um, my berry bushes, and Southern Living Plant Collection has a great, very easy uh, reference. Like It's a PDF. I will have it at the end of the video, so all you have to do is just pause the video and take a screenshot. You can always go to Southern Living or Google Southern Living, and you can find it yourself, but it will tell you how to fertilize your blueberries and your blackberries. Essentially, as I, as I remember it, blueberries get fertilized three times um, a year. Blackberries get fertilized twice a year. I know it was like once right when they start to pu push out new growth, once after harvesting. I don't know. See, this is how I get it all messed up. So that PDF will be at the end of this video so that you can reference that and it talks about all the things you need to know. But I would encourage you, y'all add like, add a little something, especially if you have young kids in your life, whether it's your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor, um, you know, your best friend's kids, whatever, 
add some sort of berries to your life, whether it's a blueberry or if it's the um, the taste of heaven or the blackberries or uh, like strawberries, right? It is so fun to see kids like their little light bulbs go off and realize, oh my gosh, you know, this is where our food comes from. It's very, very cool. So I would encourage you to find some fruit bearing <laughs> bushes um, in your life. I know that the pink lemonade I saw on Stark Brothers. Stark Brothers is an online company. That's where my daddy gets all of his fruit trees from. So you can go there and look. Um, of course, go to your local garden center, right? Visit your local garden center for uh, berry bushes and those kinds of things. I know sometimes it can be kind of hard to find. So if you can't find them locally, you can always order them online. Um, we have Taste of Heaven, uh, but with the Southern Living ones, you know, reach out to those local garden centers, see if you can find them. Um, and then, yeah, just add them to your garden. It is a lot of fun, my friends. So that is it for today. Uh, Miss B and I are going to move on to a, another project. I don't know what that project is, but it's only, you know, early afternoon. So we have got a lot of time left. I am not going to tackle the dahlias today. Uh, the sun is out and it is quite warm back here. So um, I'm going to work in an area that is a little more cooler and shaded. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.